Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, a weekend of shootings. That area obviously has become a hotbed for violence. The crime spree that left at least one person dead before it ended across state lines. Plus, a growing debate in schools statewide. It's your choice to parent the way that you see fit, and the math should be included in that. The move made by one local district as the executive order goes before the Virginia Supreme Court. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Brittany McGraw. Another weekend of shootings in Roanoke. Tonight, one person believed to be responsible for killing a man and hurting a woman is sitting in a North Carolina jail. That news reporter McKinley Struther has been working for you to piece together this violent puzzle. He's live tonight outside the Roanoke Police Department. McKinley. Brittany, while we wait for that suspect to be brought back here to Roanoke, right here to the city jail, police and the community are trying to make sense of this violent weekend. And sadly, there were more violent events this weekend that didn't even involve this suspect. One person, three shootings, all in one night. Someone shot at them. So obviously, we certainly understand how that feels. We know of at least two victims who were hurt, but Roanoke police also found themselves being shot at as well. A police report says the shooting began inside of a business in the 500 block of 8th Street Sunday evening around 715. A man was murdered and his killer, police believe, then fired shots at them. Later that night around 9, they say that same suspect also shot a woman inside this gas station on Hirschberger. We do believe that the person that perpetrated uh, the violence that we've seen last night is all connected. Fortunately, no officers were hurt, but officers had been in this area just the night before. It's just ironic, obviously, at the same location. A man was shot in the area Saturday evening. Police don't know if it's connected or pure irony. It looked like snow in my two front seats. Now let's get back to Sunday evening's violence. Just before the homicide, Evelyn Taylor heard six to eight gunshots on Loudoun Avenue. My car hadn't have been parked here. It would have went that way into the house because that's the way it went. And who knows what the outcome of that could have been. I know, and we I got a little two-year-old grandson in there. That would have killed me. This is the time for everyone to come together. That includes our courts, that includes our community, that includes law enforcement. Back out here live, the man that was shot Saturday evening and that woman that was shot at the gas station yesterday evening are both expected to survive. Some good news in all of this. There is no word sign on when that suspect will be brought back here to Roanoke. Live outside the Roanoke Police Department, I'm McKinley Struther, 10 News, working for you. A Roanoke man is in custody after an armed robbery in Henry County. Deputies say Eric Swain pulled out a gun while placing an order for food at the Dodges store on Route 220 in Bassett last night. No one was hurt. The 21-year-old was later arrested in Greensboro, North Carolina, on an unrelated charge. Some students went to school today without a mask now that the governor's executive order is in effect. 10 News reporter Alyssa Ray joins us here in the studio. And Alyssa, districts are now having to decide whether or not to keep the mandate in place, and it's leading to both confusion and pushback. Yeah, Brittany, it's definitely a hot topic, and many parents are frustrated with the conflicting views of the school districts and the new executive order. This morning, parents attended the Botetourt County School Board meeting to voice their opinions. Line was formed Monday morning ahead of the Botetourt County School Board meeting. On the agenda, a question school districts are grappling with across the state. Mask or no mask? It's been two years and we're still doing the same stuff and it's frustrating. Governor Glenn Youngkin passed an executive order that bans mask mandates in schools, allowing parents to make the decision for their children. The executive order is put out, it's very clear, it's written um, and now the schools are defying that. Currently, state law requires public schools to adhere to CDC guidelines, including wearing masks in schools. The Supreme Court will decide whether the governor's executive order is upheld. In the meantime, schools are making the call whether to stick to it or not. We've read through it. Um, the executive order does clearly state that it doesn't matter if there's a mandate at the school, that the governmental orders in the EO, EO number two overrides that. Botetourt County Public Schools voted to abide by the executive order if the Supreme Court upholds it. Until then, it's continuing its mitigation policy to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Students will be masked. 
until March 7th. That's our goal mm -hmm. to hopefully have kids out. Hopefully our transmission rates will be lower. The March 7th milestone is to give parents enough time to get their kids vaccinated if they aren't already. That decision from the Supreme Court could happen any day now. And we have a full list of school districts and their mask policies on our website, WSLS.com. Live in the studio, Alyssa Ray, 10 News, working for you. Turning now to your forecast, where we are expecting a brief warm-up ahead of another cold front. Meteorologist Justin McKee is here to show us what to expect. And yes, it was it was nice to feel some temperatures in the 40s when we think back to those really, right. really cold temperatures we've been dealing with. And, you know, some melting going on of the snow. Uh, still dealing with the snow, of course, from over a week ago. Uh, today's forecast was 46, and we hit 47 for the high temperature. So the three-degree guarantee comes in successful. Once again, that's another $10 to the Special Olympics and we are up to $370 so far in January. Temperatures still holding on to the 40s for quite a few areas, including Roanoke. You can see Lynchburg at 40 degrees, uh, South Boston at 44 right now, but we are starting to see some places fall into the upper 30s. That's what the NRV is seeing right now. The temperatures are going to be slow to fall as we go into this evening because I think we're going to cloud up a little bit more, so that kind of acts as a blanket and uh, keeps the temperatures from falling too terribly far this evening as well as overnight tonight. Uh, some of you actually may stay above freezing overnight tonight. Those levels about five degrees above average for this time of year. And we also are going to be tracking the possibility for some mountain snow. If you live across our furthest western areas, you could see some accumulation as well as uh, for tonight, as well as Tuesday morning. Here's a look at Tuesday's forecast. It looks like it will be the warmest day of the week. Some of you getting up into the 50s for highs tomorrow, but uh, definitely get outside and enjoy those because we could be feeling the single digits or uh, the teens for the wind chills by Wednesday morning. So we'll let you know why that cold uh, air is going to be returning to the area coming up in just a few minutes. Freezing temperatures have caused some issues for crews in the Roanoke Valley dealing with scenes like this over the weekend. We're told the Western Virginia Water Authority responded more to more than 15 water breaks across the region. Crews say this time of year can cause messy conditions for fixes and cleanups. You try to keep each other in good spirits. You know, you can joke around a little bit, but when it comes to work, let's get the work done. But uh, you're going to get mud on you. It's, just, it's unavoidable. And but you, you learn you learn so much stuff out here from just the bigger trucks and the dump trucks, the backhoes. It's always something interesting. You're getting freeze thaw cycle. The ground starts moving um, from contracting and expanding. Um, it puts stress on that water line because the soils may move, but the water line doesn't. It's rigid. The Water Authority will have more staff on hand because winter is their busiest time of the year. A dog is recovering tonight after he was left outside in the freezing cold temperatures. Staff at Angels of Assisi in Roanoke say they're seeing an increase in animal neglect cases like this. They want people to remember that a state law from 2020 makes it illegal to tether dogs outside during extreme weather. A scout came to us from one of the animal control agencies um, and he was being kept outside and um, he only weighed 39 pounds. So and this is a big dog, so we he was just in really bad shape. But they say Scout is now in a foster home and is getting healthier every day. Coming up, a truck driver shortage, the new partnership that can mean fewer empty shelves in your grocery store. And you can win the ultimate setup, a 75-inch LG TV and recliner for the big game on February 13th. However, I think you needed it for this past weekend because these were some epic games that happened. Sign up at WSLS.com slash insider and join the Pigskin Playoff Pick'em Game. We'll reveal the winner February 1st. The nationwide truck driver shortage hit a historic high of more than 80,000 drivers, leading to bare shelves and delivery delays. But a new program here in the Commonwealth aims to combat that growing problem. The Virginia Trucking Association and Virginia Ready Initiative aims to train students at 23 Community College. Once they get their license, they'll be paired with a company to get rolling. Fleetmaster Express in Roanoke is one of the participants. Thank you, so you know, get it going now and by 2030, the program may be nationwide. I mean, that's, that's the thing. We want to push it to where it gets to be nationwide. The goal is to staff 100 drivers in the first 100 days of this year. So far, the program is at 20% of their goal. A whole lot to talk about with the weather tonight, including mountain snow, a blast of cold air, and possibly 
a winter storm. Everything you need to know, that's after the break. New at 6, one Lynchburg coffee shop is serving kindness as people continue to struggle with the pandemic. 10 News reporter Tim Harfman is working for you to learn how you can get free caffeine, then pay it forward in tonight's Feel Good Story. There's love and care brewing at Mission House Coffee in Lynchburg. Owner Tommy Clark says their pay it forward board allows customers to support each other, especially during the pandemic. As a business, we can't always just give away our product. It's not a good business strategy, but we wanted a way to still show love, care and acceptance to every person, including those who can't afford our product. You pay it forward by purchasing a drink or meal, which is put on a gift card the baristas hold on to. Then you write who it's for and pin it to the board. And when you find a message that applies to you, just take it off the wall. Walk it up to the counter, hand it to the barista, and then you'll have your hot cup of joe. Clark says they started the program in 2019 and raised more than $2,800 so far, even as they're forced to raise prices due to inflation, supply chain issues, and minimum wage, people are still giving. Prices everywhere go up, including our own prices, uh, just to maintain a uh, profit margin. And even with that, it's still great to see the generosity of our community. They often see tags for those serving the front lines, but also those battling emotions. So it's really cool to see the heart of what people are struggling with themselves or maybe have overcome themselves and saying, I want to help somebody else get through this as well. Customer Tyler Cash says he's posted to the board because he loves the idea. I think it uh, helps others to, one, think of others, and then recipients can then uh, be encouraged that people are thinking of them uh, that they don't even know. Serving a cup of kindness to pay it forward. In Lynchburg, Tim Harfman, 10 News, working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. A quiet evening and night ahead for many of us. This is the view right now in Roanoke on our Virginia Tech Carillion Sky Cam. Some of you are going to be dealing with some mountain snow, though. Uh, we'll take a look at the last few hours on the radar. Mostly quiet in our uh, local viewing area at the moment, but you see a whole lot of snow to the north and west of us associated with the cold front. So if you live in, say, Pocahontas County, Greenbrier County, basically our furthest western regions, you are going to have the possibility of seeing uh, some snowflakes fly to, uh, tonight as well as early on Tuesday. Here's a projection from our in-house model of the kind of totals we're looking at, uh, maybe up to a couple of inches for those places like Snowshoe and Raynell, but you can see a whole lot of zeros on the map indicating this is not going to be a concern for many of us across southwest and central Virginia. Okay, temperatures right now starting to fall. You can see more 30s showing up in the NRV. Uh, further to the east, we are still seeing the 40s. High today in Roanoke was 47 degrees. Right now, 44 in the Star City. Don't believe that the temperatures fall too terribly far as we go into tonight. In fact, some of you might actually stay above freezing overnight. Our temperatures are going to be about 5 degrees above average, and we're going to be close to average, maybe slightly above it on Tuesday. Tuesday. You can see those averages anywhere from 43 in Blacksburg to 49 in Danville within a degree or two of most of those on Tuesday. So I think the melting situation is going to be continuing for us, but definitely get outside and enjoy the warmer temperatures because things are going to cool down once again behind a cold front. You can see the dip in the jet stream that we're expecting will certainly be here by Wednesday and our highs are going to be in the 20s and 30s for that time frame. Wouldn't be surprised when we're waking up on Wednesday or wind chills down to the single digits and teens. So uh, the bigger winter coats are certainly going to be coming out again as we go into the middle of the week. Uh, that is one of our weather headlines. Of course, we got to track that mountain snow tonight as well as Tuesday morning. And the more widespread chances for wintry weather are in the forecast later on this week. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So uh, Friday at noon, you can see there's going to be this front uh, out to the west of us and also a low pressure system down to the south. Basically, those are going to be able to come together. And if that ends up happening, there is the possibility for us to see some of that blue or white stuff. Uh, the uh, snow on the map there uh, does look like uh, this is mainly going to be a northeast system, a nor'easter, uh, but uh, cannot completely rule out the possibility for some wintry weather as we go into the later stages of the week. Here's a look at the odds of wintry weather at the moment for this upcoming weekend. So I did bring these up from what Chris Michaels had earlier today. You can see we're in the medium range for that Friday to Friday night time frame. Uh, maybe that would start as rain and switch over to snow and then a possibility for some morning snow as we go into Saturday, but it does look like this system would be out of here by the time we get to Sunday. Still about four days away from uh, potentially seeing uh, any of this uh, come together, so make sure you're sticking with us for updates and we will uh, let you know what ends up happening. So forecast for the next 24 hours includes the possibility for mountain snow uh, tonight and also mostly cloudy skies overhead. Our 
Our lows overnight tonight actually a little bit above average for this time of year at about 34. And uh, Tuesday is going to be the warmest day of the week. Looks like many of you getting up into the 40s. Wouldn't be surprised some folks get into the 50s. We are probably not going to see as much sunshine, though, as we go into your Tuesday. Your extended forecast features a whole lot of sunshine Wednesday and Thursday, but it's going to be cold out there. Some lows down into the teens and our highs maybe just in the 30s on Wednesday. Uh, it doesn't look like we're going to be warming up too much over the course of the week. And of course, the, the big thing everybody wanting to know about is the possibility of wintry weather this weekend. Brittany, again, still, still too early to say, but uh, we'll certainly let people know if it happens. That's right. Make sure you stick with your local weather authority to stay up to date as we get Great. closer to Friday about what's going to happen with the system. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much. You bet. Happy. All righty, it was an epic weekend for the NFL playoffs. We'll hear from Pat Mahomes on the Chiefs overtime thriller. And a report from Chapel Hill is on deck as the Hokies get ready to take on the Tar Heels tonight. Sports is next. The Hokies in a similar situation on the road tonight at the Dean Dome. Coming off a road loss at BC. 10 Sports' Brooke Leonard is in Chapel Hill to get us ready for this one. Just like the sign says behind me, it's game day. Virginia Tech on the road at North Carolina, tipping off at 8 p.m. inside of the Dean Dome. The Hokies coming off of a road loss at Boston College with a little bit of rebounding struggles, something they'll have to get in check tonight against a long Tar Heel team. Going to do a better job with our guards uh, now. Um, you know, Kebe got, uh, got, got nicked up a little bit uh, in the second half, but, you know, Hunter, I rely on that, like riding him like a horse, um, didn't have, uh, didn't have any rebounds. So uh, what is the uh, issue there? Are we uh, not uh, physical enough? Are we not sustaining that box out? Virginia Tech looking to add another win to bolster that ACC resume. That game tips off at 8 p.m. tonight here at the Dean Dome in Chapel Hill. I'm Brooke Leonard. Back to you, Happy. Auburn is your new number one for the first time ever. Duke has fallen to ninth in the AP basketball poll. The Saints, Sean Payton, future uncertain. I haven't said that. I, that is a shocker if indeed it happens. Bridgewater is at Ferrum tonight. It's not often <laughs> I get to share the desk with you, I so know, I'm just I enjoying know. it. I'm, I'm enjoying this. NBC Nightly News is coming up next. We'll see you back here at 7.